Happy New Year. I guess we're still allowed to say that at this point. Welcome to Ask Serena Live. This is my first Ask Serena for the new year. Hello, Wilson Esquire. How are you? Thank you for joining me. Welcome to Ask Serena Live. This is my weekly show that happens every Thursday at 11 p.m. where I discuss pretty much whatever I want to. <laughs> Let me turn this around. Hello. So many new names. I'm excited. How are you? So because they're new names, I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit about me. So I am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations, LLC. I am newly rebranded. So not my name, but new brand rebranded in the sense that I've expanded services to what I have been doing for like a little bit over two years. So I am a multidisciplinary business strategy and management consulting firm based in New York. And I look at everything from HR strategy to digital marketing strategy for companies. Um, I'm also a technology advisor. So I do a lot of little things that you wouldn't normally put together, but it works for me and works for my business and I'm happy with it. So there's that. Um, tonight, we will be talking about feminism uh, just because it kind of slapped me in the face as I was coming into 2016 and I thought it would be a very interesting topic to cover. So I'm going to hop into it and... Please, by all means, chime in. Let me know where you're from. If this is your first time on a scope, let me know that. Say hello, wave, let me know your breathing kicking. There's a pulse there. So let me start. So I would say about a week ago, I received a email from Blogger. Um, she slash she knows media and they're like one of the bigger entities um, in terms of like women's platforms for blogging. And so they asked me to take this survey. And so I'm not really big on surveys, but I figured it's blog her. I love them. Let me take a look and see what they're asking me to do. And in any event, uh, it was in lengthy, I mean, extremely lengthy survey on feminism, the state of it and what my opinion was and I think it took me all of like 15-20 minutes which is like eons in my world but in any event um, it went over a myriad of issues and in the scope of me taking this survey I kind of realized just how complex it was and I think the one question that just kind of um, gave me pause was when and it was probably the most simplest question that they asked in the entire survey which was, do I consider myself a feminist? And I really didn't know how to answer this. In 2016, I honestly don't know. So here's my stance. I am very passionate about seeing other women thrive. Um, I am certainly very disappointed with the state of where we are in business and in the workplace in terms of how women get treated um, holistically as a collective and so I'm not happy with that and I have spoken out quite a bit on it um, obviously on various other periscopes that I've done in the past and I've also spoken about it on my blog the aristocracy of HR so there is a component of me that is very much empowered enlightened if you will to the plight of women and would fight wholeheartedly for that cause I think why I tend to be on the fringe now about giving myself that label is it's almost as if it's a bad word. It's almost like an explicative. And it's one of those things um, where I think a few people or a, a subset of people have maybe just kind of taken the movement to a whole nother level. And so, you know, some of us maybe on the more moderate side of things are just not wanting to kind of identify with it anymore. So it's a very polarized issue. Um, you know, on one hand, there's an argument that 
within the scope of the feminist revolution, if you will, or movement that there's really no place for black women. So that's an argument um, that, you know, in the scheme of things, we just kind of get pushed aside us and the Latinas and really um, it becomes a very monochromatic movement. Now, these are not my words. These are just some of the arguments that are on the table right now. Um, and I can certainly see why that's the case. I mean, I've spoken before, I think one of my earlier scopes um, last year, I spoke about how, you know, female entrepreneurship is at an all time high. And I talked about how women are just going into it leaps and bounds, but more, even more so black women are going into it. And I spoke about the reasons why and I talked about, you know, pay disparity and things of that nature and that being one of the things. So I think when it comes to that, if we're going to talk about the workforce um, in specific, women of color get a raw deal. They just do. And what I had shared at that time was like if a white woman was getting paid 76 cents on the dollar um, that a man gets paid for a certain job. Black women are getting paid 68 cents and then Latinas 56 cents. So there's no, you know, there's definitely some parity there and there's definitely no room to kind of um, compare apples to pineapples in that particular case. So there's issues in that concern. Um, but I think there's just so many subsets. I mean, there's just one group of feminists, if you will, that are highly concerned about reproductive rights. Um, you have, you know, the feminists like myself that are more concerned about upward mobility and women's independence and having the ability to, um, you know, sustain yourself as a woman in your own right without being discriminated against. So that's kind of what I look at. Um, you have the LGBTQ angle of it as well, um, you know, which is a whole nother thing. And I think what ends up happening is when all these different subsets come to the table, there just is so much banter and so much anger um, that no one's hearing one another. And probably we're not being as effective as a collective when that happens um, because there's just nobody's listening to anybody and everybody wants to be heard on their particular um, issue, I guess, of the moment. So, hey, Letaria. So it's just, it ends up being a polarizing issue. And I think that right now there's more disagreement than agreement. There just is more disagreement than agreement. And I'm not sure, hey, girl. And I'm just not sure, you know, what that's doing for the movement overall. Um, you know, there's the other half of it where it's almost, there's a certain sentiment that, you know, if you're a feminist, you hate men, you hate men and you shouldn't be with men and men suck and on and on and on. I don't describe, I don't subscribe rather to that line of thinking. And so there's just all these balls as I'm kind of talking through the topic and all the different issues that surround feminism, you can quite understand why when I was hit with that question of are you a feminist and then given you know yes or no or I think the other way was yes no or like undecided or not sure something like that I was so conflicted I really didn't know how to answer the question because I don't subscribe to a lot of the angry banter but fundamentally I believe in women's empowerment. I'm a huge fan of that. And so it's hard for me to kind of decide on which side of the fence I should be. Um, but I think that we kind of have to get to a point where, um, right, I think it really comes down to fairness and equality. And I think if we can just get to a point where we all sit in our respective, I guess, corners and say, look, 
your issue is important, like reproductive rights is important, LGBTQ rights are important, um, you know, being able to move up the ranks in the workforce, that's important, pregnancy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. If we can just all agree that all of it's important in its own right, um, then we can move past. We can move past the arguments and then we can kind of hopefully come together as a collective and actually do something about it. But I think once you have all these separate issues and everybody's just trying to be heard um, and you know one is trying to be louder than the other because they want to be right in the situation, we're just not gonna get anywhere. And I think in the midst of doing all of that, we are somehow alienating a new, um, a new group of feminists that are very much needed. So a new generation of young women who, you know, should want to be in the realm of empowering women, but may be turned off by all the back and forth argument or may be confused because they're not sure how this works. So, you know, like if I go back to like, the time of women's suffrage and that kind of thing, I think there were still a lot of issues on the table even then. And I don't think that all of the women that were at the front of that suffrage movement were necessarily fans of one another, but they got shit done. Like, they just did. They got shit done and, you know, this person was moving their part of it and that person was moving their part of it and stuff got done. I'm just not seeing a lot of movement. Um, and it's pretty much like a lot of other, um, a lot of other movements that are kind of emerging now. It's social activism, you know, and when I say social activism, what do I mean? I mean, it's like, because lots of talk, it's like, because I have a Twitter or because I have an Instagram, um not much moving at all i mean god bless those that are moving their feet on the ground and they're at these marches and marching well hey that's something but the by and large the 80 percent of the activism is happening on social media so it happens like this like one person puts out some kind of viral tweet you know that seems profound and yes most of it is profound takes organization and being a collective and we don't have that collective and then um somehow the next person retweets and the other person's like truth and then somebody else comes in like accurate and you know it just continues and then it makes the today show and everybody that was involved with the retweeting the regramming the facebook posting what have you feels like they've done something profound for the day because they've put something out on social media and gotten, you know, all of 100 to 200 likes or, you know, 500 retweets. And I'm not minimizing the impact of that because I do think that some very um, important topics, issues, concerns of the day have gotten visibility because of social media. I'm a huge proponent for it, so don't take me wrong. I'm not poo-pooing it. But what I'm saying is that there's an issue, a bona fide issue, when the the sentiment um, or the intention behind what you're trying to cultivate remains just on social media and nobody can see the impact of it beyond the, the parameters of the internet and your computer. You have to mobilize. You have to mobilize. I mean, I was watching um, Selma the other day for like the first time ever, had not seen it. And it just, just to watch what happened, you know, during back in Dr. King's time, you know, his with his birthday being tomorrow um, and just how they, there was just such a sense of this is going to be the best for the collective and this is what we're doing. And yes, there were naysayers, but those naysayers either had to change their mind real quick, like zero to a hundred real quick, and or they were out. 
um, or somebody had to take them aside and have a discussion with them about how this goes because they'll let them know real quick like this is not how any of this works you're either with us or you're not and they just mobilized they had a plan they strategized um, you know they just knew what it was and I think that just that spirit of you know having an idea having a strategy understanding the lay of the land and then coming together as a collective um, and then mobilizing is missing it just is and so you know I kind of am speaking in general now about most movements that we see now but you know, we can just, I can just as well apply it to the whole feminist thing. I just see it as a dying franchise. Not that it's not important, not that it couldn't do good, but I just think that everybody's just trying to get their soapbox. And once they get on their soapbox and they get enough people watching, you know, they do their little dance, they do their little jig, and that's that. And then you've got this other corner who's highly pissed off and doesn't feel heard. And this other corner's over here, doesn't feel heard. It really all comes down to something very simple. And actually, um, absolutely. I couldn't say it any better. They wanted freedom collectively. And I think to that point, we're a very me 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 generation no it's nobody wants the collective i mean they talk a good game about the collective but it's really more about me it's what's in the best interest of me what's in the best interest of my family absolutely and to hell with anybody else that wants it and that's where all of these movements that you see, and I'm talking from feminism to Black Lives Matter to, I mean, the whole gamut will lose ultimately if we don't get a handle on this idea that we're better together as a collective. And if we don't mobilize as a collective, there's just, there's nothing more to do or say because there's only but so far that this social media you know, pumping your fists and, and saying all this stuff can go. I mean, it's good for, again, good for visibility, good for raising awareness, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what have you done? What have you done? And so it's very easy, correct, complaining will get you but so far. And so for me, one of the things that I'm thinking about in 2016 Go for, <laughs> go for a free meal at McDonald's. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not about the hottest next t-shirt. I mean, for instance, I'll actually show you my t-shirt tonight. So it says, Tony and Brenda taught me. And actually, I want to highlight this because this is one of my favorite uh, Black-owned businesses. This is by um, at Habitually Fly. They're actually on Instagram at Habitually Fly, and they create these t-shirts. Um, a lot of them say like Coretta and Martin taught me or, um, you know, Marcus Garvey and Umar taught me that kind of thing. It's a very black empowering kind of thing. I chose to just go with my parents, Tony and Brenda. You know, that's my movement, my family. <laughs> But um, in any event, you know, the point is, is all these cute T-shirts, all these, you know, powerful logos and all that. Everybody's going hard creating stuff, but nothing seems to be changing. And so, you know, it's been on my mind for at least all of 2015, but certainly in 2016, as I took the break from the show, I was just kind of thinking to myself, like, I can be as angry as I want about why women aren't where they're supposed to be, um, or, you know, why black women in specifically aren't where they need to be, but what are you doing about it? And if you can't answer the what to what are you doing about it, you have to ask yourself why. If they pivot to change it, you can just... Absolutely. And so, 
you know, like there's no, when I start getting on a soapbox about like women and why we don't get paid enough, like I had some fool and I have no problem calling him or her, whomever it was, I, I, I suspect it was a man come at me on Twitter the other day. I did not respond because he's not even worthy of a response, but I'd written an article about a year ago about um, equal pay day. So there, again, another social movement. They had a hashtag equal pay day, and it was supposed to raise awareness around the fact that women aren't paid as much as men. And so the whole day, there were just all these tweets that went out about that. And so, you know, I watched it. I watched it for the whole day. And then I went ahead and wrote an article. And basically the crux of the article was, you know, yes, great about equal pay day, but what are you going to do differently today? And I was basically asking employers and I was posing it to men and even women, because sometimes we can be our own worst enemy, you know, great for you to get on and say, yes, it's a travesty that it's still going on or to talk about the parody. We already know what the parody is. I was blatantly and forcefully asking, what are you going to do differently? You know, are you going to go back and look at the compensation models that you have for women in your company and say, you know what, there are some disparities here. Um, we've got adverse impact. We need to look at this and make some changes. And are you going to be transparent and, you know, strap on your britches high enough that day to go to those women and actually explain to them the fact that they are being paid less and that you plan to make them whole in some regard over a period of time. If you're not willing to do any of that, don't even bother being on the hashtag. It doesn't make sense. What are you doing it for? To be cute? Doesn't make sense. So I make sure that when I pose these things that I'm doing something. Like there's never going to be a time that you see me on a soapbox talking about this kind of issue and I'm not doing anything. And one of the things I can tell you I'm doing this year and I have been doing it last year is um, I'm very passionate about mothers. I feel like we get a raw deal in the workforce. I'm very passionate about women, as I explained in the beginning of the scope. And so I have personally partnered with another company that focused is on um, the therapeutic aspect of helping women regain their confidence so that they can reenter the workforce. And so last year we created an academy um, for, you know, women that were wanting to reskill or upskill themselves so that they could return to work. Um, and I was an instructor in that um, first leg of the academy, helping those women. And then I went ahead and created another program um, that provided continued mentorship from um, October through December for a group of women that were, you know, wanting to go to the next level of what they were already taught. And some of the things that we were going through with them was just simple job searching techniques um, they got their resumes intact. Thank you, Lataria. They got their resumes intact. We taught them about elevator pitch. I taught them about social sharing and etiquette. Um, we talked about the art of personal branding and social media. We talked about blogging. Um, so, you know, these women really spent a summer immersed in um, curriculum that will allow them to, one, think differently about how they can use their specific skill sets, um, but also how they can contribute in this new economy. It's a new economy for some of these women. They've been out of the game for six, seven, eight years um, taking care of their kids. And so the economy that they had before they had kids is not the economy that they've inherited now. Absolutely. And and the and the sad thing about it, Lataria, is these companies aren't even checking for these women. Like I have seen not one program developed by a company that's like a returnship, you know, in the sense that these women it's saying, Hey, we realize that you've been out taking care of your kids, but come on back and we're gonna help you come back and assimilate into our organization. There is nothing like that on the market. There's nothing. And so what ends up happening is women either drop out of the workforce altogether and, you know, this 
this dropping out of the uh, workforce, people don't recognize it's tied to depression. It's tied to a lot of different things because women need an outlet. They need an outlet. Now, the outlets differ based on the person, but they need something that makes them feel professionally and personally relevant outside of their kids. So what ends up happening is you get so wrapped up in your kids, so wrapped up in home life, that when the kids start to get bigger and they start to move on and do what they do, you are sitting there like, who am I? What do I do? What is my purpose on earth anymore? And that is a terrible and a very lonely place to be when the workforce isn't welcoming you back um, to be relevant, to do something for yourself. So I say all of this, I share all of this, one, because I'm really proud of this partnership that I have with Work Like a Mother, um, and two, to prove the point that I've been trying to drive home the whole scope, which is that, you know, fine if you want to get on your soapbox, fine if you want to be angry, um, fine if you want to, you know, create graphics that go viral around a certain movement, but please, for God's sakes, move your feet move your feet, move your fingers, move every appendage that the Lord has given you and do something about it. Like actually do something about it and stop complaining and stop talking about it. Right. Live it. Live it um, and and walk the talk um, because I think in a time very soon, it's just not going to be cute anymore for all of this viral tweet stuff and social activism. It's already tired for me um but i think it's wearing out as welcome because nothing's getting accomplished so if there's anything that i can leave you with it is that it is we all it's not the feminist piece it's not just for women to do obviously if nobody else is going to look out for us then it's on us to ch- kind of lead the charge but Literally, the feminist movement should not just be a woman's movement. It should be a man's movement as well. And men should be just as disgusted about the fact that women are being treated the way that they are still in 2016. Um, We all just have a moral duty to do what's right for every other human being. So we're talking about feminism, but this also you know, um, extends to racial disparity and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, enough is enough. So I'm mobilizing you guys early in the year. I'm telling you, I'm being completely transparent about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, because I felt the tug from last year that, yes, I know what I want for my business, but everything I do in my business has to lead to the greater good of something, something. It cannot just be about me making money. Yes, I have to make money. Yes, I have to pay bills. Yes. (laughs) But I also have to feel good about the work that I'm doing. I also want to feel like I'm contributing to the greater good. And so you will continue to hear this theme with me as the year draws on about ways that I'm trying to get involved and just have my business um, be about social good and not just about sales push, sales push, you know, make money, that kind of thing. So there you go. That's the feminist debate. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, As I mentioned, you heard a bit about my partnership with Work Like a Mother. I'm talking about it quite a bit. Um, You can find out a lot more about what we're doing on my Instagram account. So you can find me there at Zarina Vachar. Nice, Lataria. I I am too. I kind of said I was not comfortable with the label, but I am too. I'm a huge, huge fan of women. No one of those raging ones. <laughs> right, exactly. That's how I feel. I'm not a raging one, but I'm a huge, huge feminist. Absolutely. Um. So yes, as I said, if you want to know more about the programs, you can certainly follow me on Instagram to see. I'm I'm letting out more and more every day. Um, exactly. We all just want our rights. Okay. All of us. Um, I will have a blog post that's coming out next Tuesday, um, 7.30 AM to be exact. I actually just scheduled it before I came on here. 
that's going to speak really, really in depth about the partnership that I have with Work Like a Mother. So if you're interested, certainly um, hop over to the aristocracy of HR.com and subscribe, guys, subscribe. I swear I'm about to turn out some great stuff this year and you're going to want to be part of it like you really are. Letary is already there. So join, 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 join. Please subscribe. It's free. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for your birth date, your first child, none of that. Just subscribe because I really am sharing a lot of great things. And, you know, I just want to have a community of great people behind me as I start to roll out all these great things that I'm after that keep me up to the wee hours of the morning. If you are interested in learning more about my business, you can find out more about my business at talentthinkinnovations.com. And you can always find these replays if you don't keep it, um, if you don't catch it while it's still in queue at catch.me forward slash Sarina of HR. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all the new people that joined. Thank you, Lataria, for always being a great supporter. And I'll be back here next Thursday with a new topic. You can always find new topics on my Instagram. Again, I am at Zarina of HR on Instagram. And every once and again, I pop it up on the blog. So that's all for me. Do good stuff. Have a great rest of the week. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next week. Thanks so much for the hearts. Bye.